Hey guys! <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Just angry burnishing it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so welcome to Wednesdays with Springfield Leather, which I think is what I've come to call this when I introduce this every week. Yeah. So we are here with you today and we're going to make some belts and I hope that we're going to have some fun. I think that we probably will have some fun. We're going to try. It's going to be great. I'm terrible at making belts, so He's this terrible. is going to be great. So he's just here to learn. He was like, hey, Liz, that sounds like a good opportunity to me for get, to get some experience on some belt right. rigging. When I was like, Andrew, do you want to do this video with me? Because <laughs> Clayton, Clayton at the last minute was like, hey, I have prior engagements. So yeah. in any case, Clayton is really the belt maker and he just failed us today. So I'm going to do my best to make up for him and see what I can come up with. She's a lot better than I am. It's, it's steps. So anyways, <laughs> so goal is today is we're going to assemble some billeted belts. What is a billet? So a billet is the, the ends of the belt, right? right. So when you have the, the end that the buckle goes on, which is your turn back typically. Okay. So that's one side of a billet. The other side of the billet is the adjustment end where you adjust into the buckle. So okay. these are what are called billets. Now we sell a couple different styles of billets that you can buy so that you don't have to cut your own. And those are what I'm using today. Um, these are cut from, now, now we just sell these like in the catalog in natural black and brown Herman Oak. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've kind of cut these today from some of our embossed uh, veg double shoulders because okay. I thought it was fun. Why you can they, always. Why do they have the little puppet mouths on them? Oh, the little puppet mouths. Oh, I'm a, I'm SLC. <laughs> what do they call these? So this is um, a toe split. So when you buy just the regular billet, mm -hmm. it will come toe split, which means the side that you attach it to on your belt will be skived in about an inch and a half to two inches. I don't know if you can see that maybe vertically, Tony. Yeah. And so we do this for them, right? We do this yes. for them. Yeah. Okay. So on your regular style billets, they will come where we split the bottom grain from the top grain, and that will allow you to house whatever section of belt you need in there and then sew it down. That's okay. a great idea. Right. So this will be one style of billet that we use today. The other one is what's called a ranger billet. So that's the other style that we carry. So this is our ranger billet set in the three quarters of an inch. That means the um, buckle that you will use is a three quarter inch buckle that goes, you know, here on your turn back and then it'll, you know, accommodate your adjustment side. Um, we're going to be using this on an inch and a half strip. Okay. Cool. So these will get sewn flat. These do not come toe split. They come full thickness um, and then they get sewn flat onto a belt and then we'll make what's called a ranger belt. Okay. So we've got just some billets that we're going to make some fun, fancy, girly belts with and then we're going to make a ranger belt. And I don't think you can make a ranger belt girly. You probably could, but Maybe. it's a ranger belt. Like it's... Put flowers and spackle all the time. Or sparkles. So, yeah. Spackle? Spackle on it. It's curly. Oh, guys. Right. It's been a week already. So, okay. So, we have brown thread. We've got our class 26 threaded up over here. Um, we've got brown thread in it. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to do, first, we're going to do um, this crazy horse embossed belt. Um, kind of get that sewn up and then we'll do the, the ranger belt and then we'll move over and I've got this fun kind of piece together um, black thing that we'll have to change up the thread to do. So, we have been working on getting our keepers burnished and beveled so they're nice and pretty but what we're going to do typically when we're in the shop Andrew we just staple these things yep and it's you know it's fine but it's not fancy so yeah. today we're going to be fancy and we're going to hand sew our keepers together she's making me hand I'm going to make him hand sew them because I have to do the rest so the I'm going to I'm going to punch holes in them now yeah so what we did is we just clicked out you know well we half handed it we obviously have cutting dies for most of our products here that we produce, so um, he's just going to punch a couple of holes in the ends of the the keeper sections that we have um, cut and burnished here, and then he will sew them up with an X, I'm assuming. Yeah. Make them all nice and, nice and pretty. So the first belt that we are going to make is going to be the sectioned belt. What I did yesterday, guys, is I literally, you can make a belt out of so many different things. It doesn't have to be just a, you know, straight belt strip. Um, there's a lot of different fun designs that you can do. And so this one, I have used our um, 
our slingshot pad die. So we sell a slingshot, I think typically like in the catalog, it's just um, oil tan leather and you can buy, you know, like a 25 pack or whatever. Um, I've just cut out the slingshot sling shot shape, that's kind of hard to say, um, into the embossed um, veg tan and then in some buffalo crazy horse. So I thought these two looked good together. And then I cut out a, just a three quarter inch strip of, um, is that actually three quarters of an inch? No siree, it's five eighths. Oh. This is a five eighths inch strip because this is a five eighths inch slot that was already in my, um, my shape here. So there's the shape. It's got those nice slots in it. And all I'm going to do is I am going to start and thread this through. So let's see here. I want that one to be on the bottom. Yeah. So for this particular belt, I am just stacking these one on top of the other. I'm going to thread through my strip here. And then I just need to leave enough on the end for me to house this billet. So not too much. That's probably even a little bit too much. Don't forget your piece. How's everybody doing this morning? They're all quiet. Why is everybody so quiet? I'm so trying not Dave to. that he finally gets to watch the feed live. Thanks so for all that we do in Las Vegas. Woo! We're not in Las Vegas. We're in Springfield, Missouri. He's from Las Vegas. Oh, okay. We wish we could be in Vegas. Probably like my Andrew to videos anymore. <laughs> the Philippines. Wow. wow that's, cool. that's a long ways away. Probably warmer than we are today. It is a little bit chilly outside, but... Yeah. We had a freeze warning yesterday. I planted all my giant pumpkins, and I had to bring them all inside. I was a little bit worried about them last night. You plant the pumpkins or the seeds? Well, the seeds. Oh, okay. I planted the seeds. Thanks for that. <laughs> Put all these pumpkins on the ground. Ain't doing nothing. All <laughs> oh, the giant. Oh, the big hole you had to dig to yeah. plant some giant yeah. pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, that's a rock. The foundation of my house. So. Do we have uh, some scissors or some wire snips or something? Mm, that's a big fat no. Oh, look at this. Right. Oh, look, some. there's some snips. We got all some right. snips. Let's see here. Okay. So, oh guys, I already messed up. Look at me go there. What did I do, Andrew? I don't know. This one is... That one has to go under that one? See how that one... So it's right... That, that one needs to go under. Right. Yeah. Just kidding. Liz is real nervous because her mom's watching this morning. Mm -hmm. Hi, Liz's mom. There we go. Donnie says you're giving me some great ideas for guitar straps. Yeah. So honestly, I mean, this is, for, for me doing this kind of belt, like, use up your scrap pieces. I'm always amazed that, that people want to buy, like, our, our pre-cut pieces, you know, like those 12 by 12s and 12 by 24s and have just enough leather for their one project. And maybe, maybe that's all you're doing is just one project. But I tell you what. You know, when you buy footage and you're cutting up your stuff, you've got all these little extra pieces sitting around. Like, do something fun. Make I make agree. some fun stuff with it. You know, that's kind of a lot of times we're buying leather for our orders um, and it's things that we have to do. But with the little scrap pieces, you can be creative and kind mm -hmm. of um, right. actually experiment a little bit and not have to worry about, you know, messing up your big, pristine pieces. But you can use kind of those those edge bits. So. That's all I did here. I went through the, the shop and I grabbed up all the scrap that I could find and I started just cutting some things out that I thought would, would look good together. So now, that was all. I clicked these out yesterday. I just threaded it up. So I've got, you know, my, my totally pants on cool. both sides. I think it looks pretty neat. you just punch holes in the edges of those? So th they were already they there. They that way. Yep, okay. they were already there. So this, like I said, this was just a, a slingshot pad die. Oh, yeah. And so, okay. guys, if, you, if you've never called in or never really um looked into it too much any of the shapes that we offer on our website or in our catalog those are products that we manufacture here so if it's a belt strip or if it's just one of those veg tan leather shapes um and you see a leather that you like mm -hmm. but you want it out of this particular shape give us the call um the price is probably going to be a little bit more expensive than just the veg shapes because you know we may not cut up that specific leather we may not have a lot of scraps sitting around so we'll have to get you a, a price quote but we can custom cut the shapes that we have here.
gear in house into whichever leathers that yeah. you're wanting to do your project. So this is something that you know you could call up, um, and you know we can talk through with you, and we can get you set up to do things like this. Or like I said, just come up with your own shapes at home and and find fun things that you like to do. Kind of kind of like these. I mean, this is one of the shapes that we have that you're going to be working on a little bit later. Exactly. Yeah. And you could literally use anything. It could be pointed. It could be rounded. It, yeah. Yeah. I, I love using scraps. They're just great. have, yeah, just have fun with it. So, okay. So I've got this ready. This is my buckle end with the toe split side. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, I need to cut this off a little bit. And I've got my knife here. So I'm just going to trim this down a tad. And then that just tucks, I'm gonna tuck it right in. So we're going to center, we're just going to center that. And then I'm going to glue that up. So just centers, houses right inside there. What type of glue are you using? I'm going to use this Rinia glue for once in a video, guys. <laughs> I like the Rinia a lot. I went to go get some of the glue out of the shop today, but it was just a little too thick for, for my taste. Oh, that's weird. This little thing falls off. Yeah, the Rennie is great. It's it's water based and it doesn't smell terrible like the uh, mm -hmm. other chemical based. It's a little and <laughs> safer to use. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're indoors or at your kitchen table or something. And yeah, anytime that I use the rubber cement, I have to I have to warn my wife and open all the windows. And oh, it smells so bad. It holds really it. well, but yeah, it's but it's pretty terrible on those senses. Yeah. And honestly, so I'm going to be sewing this. Um, so I'm not worried too much about like roughing up the surface of my little um, end that's going to go between my my split pieces there because I just want it to hold just until I'm done sewing. Um, just kidding. I won't that's do that. That's a brand new shirt. <laughs> brand new. Uh, let's see here. This radio glue looks like it's glowing. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe it's the lighting in here. Hmm. What is it? Like it's black. Oh, thanks, Tony. You're welcome. Is this from the Pop Tart? Maybe radioactive. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so this morning, guys, Abigail comes in oh, with a yes. beautiful homemade Pop Tart to show us. She showed us a Pop Tart. Look at this Pop Tart. Well, Look I eat this. it and enjoy it and <laughs> ruin your lives. So it's, 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 she's so polite. We yeah. have we are making her rue the day that she brought in a pop tart. <laughs> I didn't even know homemade pop tarts were a thing. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> awesome. Ah, oh, Jessica, I'm so glad you got in on our What's Up Wednesday and you found something that you were excited about. That is very cool. Very hey, look cool. At that. People are talking to us. On People the are talking to us. <laughs> Josh, we always enjoy having you. Sorry, we can't do this every day, but I would probably have an anxiety attack. So that's not happening. How do you toe split mm. the billet? You ask Springfield Leather to do it for you. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how you would do that at home. That could be a any question. So yeah. we have splitters here. We have big industrial Camoga splitters. And I take this to the guys in the shop and I say, toe split this for me. And they figure out how thick the leather is. And then they will set the, um, you know, thickness height on the, on the Camoga to be half of that. And then they'll run it through and then they'll pull it back out. A lot of splitters actually will have a toe split option that you push it. And then you can set how far in you want it to run. That way you can kind of production style these. Um, otherwise you just kind of push on the, the release and you can pull it back out when you're just doing one or two, but it would be hard to do on your own. You basically, you need to cut it through the, yeah. the width of the Do you have one thickness. of the toe split pieces? Um, or do you use them both? Oh. I haven't used this one yet. Okay. So a thought, if you wanted to toe split this piece without it, you could sky this end completely off and then just use a split piece back here. Maybe punch a rivet through there to hold the flap on. And then you've got a a toe split, so it'd be two separate pieces. It wouldn't it wouldn't be one single piece. So that might be a way that you could do it. Um, you'd have a rivet right at the end there. Yeah, uh, which is what I'm going to do. So on the last belt that we make, I I basically did a front and a back, and I'm going to house it the same way that I did. But honestly, if you guys were doing this at home, you'd probably have like a liner piece of leather, mm -hmm. and then your and then your yeah. top side um, that then you would just house it in between because it it would be difficult to get a toe split without a, a splitter at home. Yeah. 
but yeah, it's it's very difficult. <clears throat> I don't I don't know. That would be rough for trying to run a razor blade down there. I I think I'd hurt myself. You have to be so. pretty talented. Yeah. I'm sure there's some guys out there that could do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we've got this in nice and glued on. That's adhered really really well. So now I'm going to come to this other end. And basically on sizing, like for these, you just figure out how many links are going to make a nice belt. And so you know, since this is her waist is like this big. It's going to be great. This, this is a belt that's, well, kind of being sized to me, I guess, because it's sporty. Yeah, my, we my can make it for you. 40 inches and yeah, Perfect. so this would not fit me. I would not. Do I need to burnish something now? Um, no, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and sew these on. Okay. So let's, if you cool. want to actually get started on burnishing, I would like all of this to be beveled and burnished before I sew them. All right. I am so. beveling and burnishing billets. <laughs> You Negative. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. What is your guys' preferred way to cut veg tan with a knife? Is that is that what you're asking, Donnie? If, like, I mean, we just use um, like Ulfa box cutters when we're cutting, especially heavier leathers. This is typically what we use. I know Denny literally always uses a head knife to cut anything. Um, so if you're talented enough with a head knife, then by all means, you know, you can go that route. I am not. A head knife is that round curved shape thing with a handle on it like this. It's it's difficult to use. I've tried a few times and but yeah, he's he's really good at it. But yeah, I use just these as well, just a razor blade. They work great. Having a fashion belt is whatever you want to make that's not a regular just veg tan belt. I'm just gonna have fun with some different leathers. So a lot of these leathers are just our regular stock ones that I've come up with different just not a not a typical way to assemble a belt so this one is just with kind of these little parts that i've stacked on top of each other and, and ran a strap through i i don't know i call it a fashion belt and you can bling these much uh as much as you want you can put um you know crystal rivets on them if you wanted you could i don't know how do you conchos you can put some conchos on it let's see i'm gonna trim that off and if you don't have a sewing machine, you can hand stitch these two um, yeah. with like colorful thread and stuff to match your match your hardware or match your conchos. Or I was gonna say this would actually be a pretty easy one to hand sew. Like hand sewing a full belt is is pretty terrible because there's so much length there. But just hand sewing these little billets, um, I'm gonna sew around the whole perimeter of them. But you could honestly just tack this on if you wanted to. Um, but hand sewing the perimeter wouldn't be too terrible. Just a little bit. I'm just edging these billets right now and getting all the, the fluff off of it before I use some of the uh, Toco Pro on it. I feel like a little kid Toco Pro. playing with glue. Okay. I'll tell you what, Kevin had the, a good idea the other day is just to take your little cutoff and spread your glue around, but I am obviously not that bright. So, <laughs> so I'm, you're using your finger. I'm just using my finger. <laughs> It's fine. That's water based. It's fine. I but why I, is it glowing? I don't really know. <laughs> we don't worry about it. We'll it's fine. deal with it later. Everything's fine, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> That's How do we feel about olive oil as a finish? Olive oil as a finish. I've used it one time. It's uh, it's all right. I mean, I don't know if I would call it a finish. Yeah, like, well, it's just an oil. It's, a, it's an oil. It and, moisturize it. Yeah, and, and you can. Sometimes I worry about olive oil spoiling. Like, or if you get a lot on the leather, or somehow turning putrid. Sure. Like, just because it can spoil, it's a, you know, you're supposed to cook with it. It, it does have kind of a shelf life. Um, where Neat's Foot Oil or Neat's Foot Oil Compound or, or one of those, um, doesn't really isn't going to spoil on you. And if I remember right, I think Neat's Foot Oil is actually about the same price as olive oil, depending yeah. on what you're getting. So, and Neat's Foot Oil is, is kind don't, of don't bevel that part. Don't bevel this part. No. You mean the part that I already beveled the whole way around? That's okay. No, just this okay. part. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. 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 No, that's all right. Sometimes I don't like to bevel the backside of it to be flush on a thing. Oh then, yeah, good call. Then it just yeah, know, that it makes sense. Better, uh, but. So just the top. Yeah. Here. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah, just the, just the bottom. <laughs> now we're just going to house this guy. Yeah, 
Everybody is quiet today. I don't see any questions on the on the board. Everybody's just and we're concentrating, trying not to cut ourselves on the leather. Chomping on their lunch, right. watching us be silly. <laughs> I think that's really all you guys tune in to do is just to watch us be a little ridiculous, which is fine. I'm all right with that. <laughs> I'm ridiculous most days. Uh, let's hear. So, just real fast. So Andrew's over there, and he is burnishing with a lovely, lovely burnishing tool. Yeah, are no you not? kidding. Seriously. Yes, you are. This is now my favorite burnisher in the whole wide world. I love it. You Larry, Larry Schmidt. Put, put it over here. I don't. It's mine. There it is. Yeah. It's him. <laughs> it's, oh, there we go. Yeah. So it's one of those beautiful, I think we posted about it a while back. It's gorgeous, and it works really well. It is super smooth. The diameter between this... You nailed it, Larry. If you're if you're watching, you nailed it. These are great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, seriously. So yeah. vegetable oil can spoil, but olive oil is probably not going to spoil. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I haven't ever had it spoil. Oh yeah. And I think that's the chat. The chat's consensus as well. I've heard about it used. I I've, I've never actually used it um, in any of my products. Yeah. But honestly, I mean, it's probably easier for me to buy Neat's Foot Oil than it might be for a lot of people to buy Neat's Foot Oil. Sure. So, yeah. all so of if you're in a pinch. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so basically this is done. I'm going to go sew it so you guys can watch me use a Class 26, and then we'll come back, we'll put on our belt, and then we'll be ready for the next one. So, I'm just going to work on edges. You're just going to edge things. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Got my lovely edge guide here, the roller edge guide that we send with every class 26 machine. I'm going to start that right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, we're doing a little construction today, so if you hear some noises, those are not pigeons. We have had birds in here before. We have. Rourke actually caught one. I have a picture of Rourke in the shop with a with a uh, bird on a broom. You might have to elaborate a little, seaweed, Dave. You're starting to work with some hair on stuff, and he wants recommendations to keep his hair where it grows. <laughs> hair will get uh, everywhere um, when you're trimming and things like that, so. He's a vacuum. I use a shop vac whenever I, I use hair on stuff. I don't use it a lot. Um, you, you can make some really cool stuff with it. But uh, yeah, that is always a, a, a tough thing. Vacuum works great. Well, and also, so like if you are um, having problems with like your glue, um, like you're, you're working with hair on and uh, not problems with glue, but if you're having problems keeping your project together as you're working with it. Um, one of the recommendations that Clayton always has is to kind of go through and apply some glue on the hair on um, just before you begin your construction. And that will kind of cement um, the hair in place so that you can, you can work with it a little bit easier. But you only want to do that if it's going to be under a seam. Do you remember backstitch? Well, because nope, I'm coming back around okay. and I'm going to go over it so I don't have to backstitch in this condition. Hey, Denny. Am I late? Denny just walked in. <laughs> you're never or, late, Denny. You're always early. Just <laughs> time. Liz is having the fun with the sewing machine over there and she's got me burnishing billets. I'm making a belt, I think. That's my goal. Oh, you know what? Let's put the roller edge guy back down, guys. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, just burnishing away. I've never made a billeted belt before. Uh, oh, you haven't? No. Mm -mm. This is a first for me. Yeah. yeah it looks kind of neat. I think these are for the Ranger belts. Uh huh. So, Denny, we had some. We had some talks earlier in the video about toe splitting without a machine. Oh, yeah. Do you have any suggestions for people? Uh, Why don't you come around the other side of the table so I can shoot the front of your head instead of the back end? <laughs> <laughs> the back's probably better. <laughs> uh, 
as far as toe splitting, no. But uh, you can skive without a machine. If that means anything. So how would you do? How would you do? Like a if you toe split like we did on here. Or what would you do for a ranger belt? Say you say you sandwich the belt part in there instead of on top of it. So like on this one. A ranger belt only goes on top. Yeah, no, I, yeah. Well, I can't take well, that. Well, now, when I, we used to make what they call a Wyoming Ranger, which which doesn't actually have billets, but it's real similar to a, to a regular Ranger with billets. And it is actually sandwiched in between the, the pieces of leather instead of on top. The Wyoming Ranger? A Wyoming Ranger. Why do they get to be so special? Because of it. They're That's nice. where they came up with it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as far as far as toe splitting this, I wouldn't toe split it. I would just skive it off from from the back side. Right, which is what I did. I yeah. I pulled those through the the um, Osborne. Yeah, the bench bench the splitter. splitter. Yeah. yeah. And you can do that, or you could do it with a round knife or a, a safety beveler or. A, any kind of a beveling tool or a skiving tool. What do you think about olive oil, Denny? I love it. I love <laughs> it. On your leather or in your food? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Both. It works. It works very well. I'm, a lot of people say it. It adds a different color. I really don't know that it does that. To it. You know, the color that you get depends on, on the leather, the piece of leather that you're using. Uh, I know if you have uh, wet a piece of leather several times, let it dry and wet it several times and let it dry in the air and everything, it turns it more of a, a cherry color before you ever start to oil it. And then you put the oil on and it turns it a really beautiful cherry color. You know, and a lot of people say, well, the oil I used is what made it take that color but that's not necessarily so but the olive oil is is great to needs foot oil olive oil any any sort of vegetable oil works works very well on a veg tan leather and it doesn't end up going rancid over time or anything that you've noticed well if you over if you saturate over saturate yeah, yeah anything yeah. will go rancid you know? sure yeah <laughs> okay yeah so we've had a few people do some googling for us and they've seen that olive oil could go could go rancid. I've never, I've never had it do that myself. Yeah. I've used olive oil quite often, and in in my experience, I've I've used it one time and it hasn't gone rancid on me. No. What? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to be funny, but you know, that's <laughs> the one time I've used it. <laughs> Am I, I don't have to knowledge. I, I guess if, if you if you leave a bottle of olive oil out. Yeah. You know, it will go rancid in time, I would say. Yeah. But as far as after you put it on the leather, no, I've never, never had any problem like that. You know, and, and any kind of a vegetable tan leather is going to mold if if, uh, if the moisture conditions are right. Yeah. You know, uh, you know but that's not rancid. That's just sure. mold. Yeah, and that, that can be wiped and cleaned off, too. Sure, sure. Yeah. Or clean it off with oxalic acid, and that'll kill the mold. Yeah. I've heard people say lemon juice does that too. Or, oh, or interesting. What else were they saying? We were talking about that last week, I believe. I for, I forget what other product they were using. Maybe lemon juice will clean hard water stains too. Yeah. Okay. So I've got this one all sewn up. Look, Denny, I made a belt. That's nice. Isn't that Very fun? nice. I yeah, like that. Cool looking. Yes, I do. Um, Could you invent that, Liz? I, I, I think I. Well, I did something. She used a slingshot. Piece. I used a slingshot pad. That's hey, good. hey, you've got a thread burner. I do. You just showed me. There you go. Thanks, guys. Andrew has been sourcing some uh, fun little giveaway stuff for us. Yes. And so this is he's gonna get some of these like fun little thread burner holders, yeah. lighter things you know whatever you want to call this this little cover that'll have our logo on it so that um here in the next you know month or two that should go out in some orders maybe we'll throw it in with a sewing machine since obviously you guys will need to do a lot of thread burning because yeah. you're going to be making stuff faster than ever 
It's kind of cool to be able to hook it on your belt, and when you're done, you yeah. just release it and let it go. Because yeah. you always lose your thread burner on your bench. No matter, like, mm -hmm. it's just always, you put it down over here, and then you can't find it because it's not on your machine anymore. And That's why yeah. I have five of them. That's why I didn't have five of them. <laughs> so yes. we can always have one, hopefully, somewhere that he can find. Let's see. Okay. So this one, I was going to put a nice gold buckle on it. And for these guys, um, let's see here. We've got our little keeper that Andrew so kindly made for us here. Put in our buckle. Mm, yeah, that's right. Honestly, these don't really need a keeper because it's a center bar buckle, but we're going to do it. Because it looks Oh, yeah, good, good point, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. No, but it a lot looks of people nice. like yes. a real long tail on their... And I don't, I hate that because I know I, I have, do. it always comes swinging off the edge of my body and it looks funny. <laughs> so I just like a short one. So we've got some handy dandy Chicago screws. Denny, so I had somebody email me this week. It was um, a Richard and I have not gotten back to you, Richard, and I apologize if you're watching, but I did bring this. And so remember oh, when we talked yeah. about the peacock last week? And so... I went and I found this out on our retail floor. Um, and maybe we'll talk about that for here just a second. That, is, that sure is gorgeous. Like that, uh, it, that is really nice looking. It's actually, I don't know if it's the glass that did it or, or just the faded. sunlight. But the, it, it kind of faded colors, but it faded mm -hmm. nicely. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to put Absolutely. it up here so we yeah. can get a top shot of it? As long as it's not too glary. There we go. Yeah, so um, this was... Richard was asking about like a design for it, and this was just a picture that I found on the internet. Yeah. So. And I just. Mhm. Mm yep. It was just a vector art, uh, just a black and white digital vector art file that I printed off for Denny, and he took it and made and a tracing. Plagiarized it. And totally <laughs> plagiarized it. You made it your own. But this beautiful piece of leather. It's it's basically nothing like the actual picture was. <laughs> <laughs> it's very different. And then uh, Clayton spent some time with some dyes, and, oh, yeah. and he cl colored it. Yeah, he's Clayton's the one that made it look good. It does look pretty. What type of dyes did they use? Just uh, Phoebings, or? I think he, he just used. Yeah, he used some Phoebings dye. He probably I mean, used some Angelus too. dyes, yeah. too. Okay. Angelus has a, a, a larger assortment of, of colors, you know. Yeah, uh, and kind of some specialty colors. Like, Phoebings got all the, the regular ones, but Angelus mm -hmm. makes, um, like, light rose. I don't know. Yeah. They just have some... Yeah. I think I pull it up for that. This one. Yeah, there. Ooh, um, there we go. Yeah. So it's a little hard yeah. to see the the coloring, maybe, but um, it's just really neat. Yeah. Originally, we were talking about paisley. I think that's mm -hmm. where that yep. where that came from, and you came up with that, and it's sort of a yeah cornucopia paisley, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> It was a neat design, but yeah, that was just something we just, I looked up, I think, like, Paisley Peacocks on on the good old interwebs, <laughs> and that's what we found. Look at that. We got a belt. I think well, that, that is cool. Beautiful. I think that's pretty nice. Beautiful. Yeah. So, the belt. Belt with some billets. So, you don't have to always just have one big piece of leather. You can use whatever little parts and pieces that you've got. Okay. So, fashion belt number one, done. And yes, that is 138 oh. thread. Yes. You don't have to oil your leather, but it's probably a good idea. Yes. If yep. you want to keep it good. Um, That's... it depends on what leather you're working with. So, with veg tan, you almost, like always, we always recommend that you put some sort of oil on it before you start finishing and sealing it. Yeah. Um, it's dry, it's come out of the tannery, you know, they, that's what they did. They tanned and dried it. And so it just needs a little bit of moisture added back to it for longevity. Yeah, you just have to lubricate it. Yeah. Lubricate those. Just bodies. needs a little lotion. Okay. And then, yeah, is yep. there a reason you use a Chicago, um, I didn't want to set a snap. And yeah. also, the Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> um, the Chicago screws have a smaller head than the snaps do. Snaps, like, um. Uh, line 20 snap has like a half inch wide head which is sometimes just a little large for this little area um but it's just easier chicago screws are just easier you know, and they're not yeah know. and and you could just rivet it too yeah you or, could or stitch it shut mm -hmm. if you never planned on changing the buckle exactly that gives you a little bit of options if you wanted to switch the buckle out um but there wasn't too much 
too much thought. I said, Andrew, find me hardware. And that's what I got. <laughs> so, yeah. no. Okay. Ooh. Look at that. Andrew's using some of our new bevelers over here, getting a bevel on, yeah. on this. I do like these a lot. These are great. Everybody else likes them too. You can't keep them in stock. I, I know. know. I haven't even gotten a set for myself. I have to come back here and swipe them off the wall. Not that I do that. I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, Jeff wants you to know that it's starting to get nice in Jensen. Gen no. Nice in Jenison? Jenison. Ah, there we Jenison. go. Where is Jenison? Now? Jenison is in Michigan, in West Michigan. Ah. So, if is this the right way? Is that the right way? I don't know. How does the camera face? It's over here. So the thumb is <laughs> thumb is here. Or it's it's over there. It's on West the far Michigan. side of the mitten. That's right. On the opposite side of Detroit. Opposite side of Detroit. There you go. That's <laughs> I'm actually going to be back up in Michigan in June. Uh, looking forward to that trip. Okay. So we're going to do the Ranger belt next. And so while Andrew um, works on getting those edges kind of finished up here a little bit, we'll go over some of the kind of basics of assembling a Ranger belt. So basically, you've got your two billets. Um, like we talked about in the in the first of the video, they are not toe split. We have pulled them through um, uh, a, bench a bench splitter. So to just split down the end that we are going to be uh, uh, sewing to the actual belt strip. Yeah. And you really don't have to do that, but it makes it not near so bulky. Exactly. You, yeah. you don't have that big lump there. Yeah. And so, yeah, because what I'm using, I'm using some bridal leather. I'm using... Um, Honestly, I think this is like some ALD um, English tan bridle is what I'm pretty sure that this is. And so it's pretty heavy. It's probably like 12 ounce or so. Yeah. So it's pretty mm -hmm. stout. So I didn't want all of that thickness sitting on top of the belt to be sewn yeah, down. Yeah, because you figure 12 ounces there and, eight. and what, eight ounces there. Yeah. And it's that's pretty 20 heavy. 20 ounces of leather. <laughs> yeah, to sew through just in this one little section. Yeah. Now, I did keep the rest of the billet heavy because that's your buckle section, and so it's always nice to have a, a, a pretty decent and, and um, hefty there so it lasts, you know, a while. Your billet's the part that'll wear out on a belt. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then on this other end, I probably split it down to about eight, eight or nine ounces on the whole thing so that my turn back turns nicely, and then this is just the same thickness all the way, all the way across. So, what a ranger belt is that a lot of other belts don't do is that it crosses in the front. Right. So, you've got your billets that come through and they buckle, but then underneath this inch and a half part that we're going to that we're going to sew these two actually overlap and create one solid band all the way around. Yeah, here. actually one the, your billet goes over one way and your your Belt strip. The belt strip exactly goes under the other direction. Yeah. So you're actually overlapped opposite. Yeah. It's why? Do you know why? Do you know why Ranger Belt? <laughs> uh, basically, so you could have a, a thicker actual belt with a, with a thinner buckle. It, you okay. don't have as much bulk out in front of you. Sure. Well, so like we've got thick belt. We've got this one down here, yes. and so this is um, a, tapered a tapered belt. belt. Yes. So you can still, was it just so that we could have these big fancy buckles, but they sure. wouldn't have to be so wide? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because it, that's a one inch buckle and an inch and a half belt. So right. Uh, if you, the one inch uh, heel bar buckles like that are big. The inch and a half ones? Big. Oh, yes. That's yeah, they're the huge. Half are big. Because you've got all of this, so. Yeah. So it's basically just that you can still wear a really fancy buckle, but it's not as big. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Because otherwise, then you're just a rodeo clown. Yeah. 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 That's right, dude. You're just a rodeo clown. You're just a rodeo clown. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what. Well, I think, you know, a lot of people like the big buckle, but, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. but it's not a real comfortable way to yeah. go. Now I can see that that could be a little, a little uncomfortable there to have a big old yeah. three inch buckle. Yeah, but for like gun belts and stuff, mm -hmm. that's that's probably where the Ranger belt started. Okay. With, with with a gun belt and some of those are three three and a half inches wide oh, you know yeah. so can you imagine using a three and a half inch buckle oh good gravy a buckle yeah. <laughs> to fit a three and a half inch strap would have to be probably four four, four and a half inches yeah. wide yeah pretty hefty so that's why ranger belts yeah but so yeah so how this works you've all of your your strips coming together your 
um, the under the the adjustment end will go under and behind the other strips. So this will this belt will actually have two keepers and you can use up to three. I've seen a lot of them will have three keepers. They will have two small ones to secure the billet in two different sections um, along the front and then they'll have one large one that sits behind that secures your wide strip in right. place. Right. Um, today we're just gonna use two because that's all my buckle set. It came with one um, metal keeper and then we made one leather keeper to secure the back side. Yeah, the ones with, with two silver keepers are generally custom made well, sterling silver buckle set. They're know, fancy. They cost $500. <laughs> it's an expensive old, belt. Was it Scott, Scott <laughs> Hardy? Scott Hardy? Oh yeah. Yeah. He makes that, some good ones. That kind of stuff, yeah. Will you hurry up? I'm almost here, done. I am burnishing like a madman. I am talking. So my angry head. burnishing. <laughs> I gave you some information. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so Tony found why Ranger Belts. Um, let's see here. The history of the Ranger Belt began as a cinching technique in horse tack. It allowed for tightening a strap without pinching the horse hair in the buckle. Pinching a horse's hair in the buckle. Hmm. So, okay, because the strap behind would... Okay, okay. Um... Just keep breathing. Yeah, the, 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 uh, they're talking about the gun belts down down below that part. To, okay. You know, a, a wide belt and, and a smaller buckle. Yeah. So. I don't have to keep reading. I've been done with this for a while now. That's. We're just kidding. Thanks for letting. There's a lot of. <laughs> Tony can copy and paste that into the description, yeah. and you guys can read about Ranger buckles. Right. Belts. Okay. Please. No, I know. I read one of them. Okay. Trying to give a history lesson here. So now sizing these is really it's pretty straightforward. Like, so we were gonna make a 40 inch for Andrew over here. So I've got my billet end. I'm just gonna stick it down here where my buckle goes, because that's where I'm gonna start mm -hmm. measuring. And then I've got this guy that I'm gonna put on my 40. Yeah, the center hole of this. This yeah. Bill it will so, be Tony, you want to go to the, the top one? There we go. Okay. I'm trying to copy and paste this into the chat so Thanks. you wouldn't read it. <laughs> okay. So, we've got our ruler here. At the very tip of the ruler is where my, my adjustment starts. So, I'm going to put my turn back folded. My turn back is folded, which is where the buckle will be housed at the very end. And then over here, I've got my adjustment end. I'm going to make a size 40 belt. So, I've got size 40, and that's where my center hole on this billet is going to land. And so then, at that point, we just have to decide how much of this base strap we're going to cut off. So on this end, Denny and I was talking to Clayton about this, because I've never done this before, but he said you want to come about halfway into the buckle. Is that yeah, what you're like, doing? I like to cover the complete buckle. He likes to? Okay, yeah. well, we'll do so that. So just, just a hair past, maybe a quarter inch past the end of the buckle is the way I usually do. Okay, so that is here. So we're going to come out basically, and we'll just cut it. Um, and then, so you can really do the ends on these any way that you want. I'm going to have one flush straight end, and then on, on my adjustment side, I'm actually going to use this kind of multi-end strap punch to make it thread through a little bit easier when we go to thread it through our keeper. So I'm going to use this punch on the other end. So this one I'm just going to cut off. Look good, right mother? Yeah. That looks good. There we go. So that is going to be... This guy, and then down here, would you come all the way to I the do, end? Or? Yeah, I do it the same way, just all a way. hair past the end of your billet there. Just a hair past, and then we're going to yeah. just... You guys decide how big a hair is. <laughs> <laughs> how big do you want that? Okay, I get this right through the hole. Nope, this. There we go. And then so we'll cut it around 45 and a half. Yeah. 45 and a half. Awesome. We'll just do this up here. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and punch this just right there. We're going to center that up. And then you can do some more beveling and burnishing. Yeah, you cut all my, my beveling and burnishing off. Boom. All right. Well, that's the one tip. The other one's going to stay straight. I don't need to bevel that end, do I? 
Of course. Yes, you do. Of all I of guess I'm beveling <laughs> all of <laughs> it. <laughs> Let's see here, Marcus. I thought you measure from the inside end of the buckle and not the turnover the inside end. What's the inside end? Yeah, I don't know. Marcus, give us a little bit more specific on where you're. So when we measure from the inside end, from the tongue of the buckle, I think is what they're talking okay. about. Okay. From the buckle tongue, which would be this part right here. Yeah, okay. Right there. Uh, you can do that. Generally, they're measured from the, from the turn back, though. That's how we measure ours. Yeah. That's what we. That's typically what we do. Um, let's see here. Shay, what do y'all think about re-dyeing a saddle with the Fenici? It would be very nice, but it's very, it's a job. When you, <laughs> when you go to, to dye a, a big piece like that, because a, a saddle has a lots of ins and outs, you'll probably need to take it apart to really get a good dye job on it, you know, but... It sounds like they've got a shop, so maybe they're yeah. just wondering if Fenici would be a good one. Sure, sure it would. Okay. It, that's it's a good penetrating dye. Yeah, you know? I was I was pretty impressed with it. Um, that, black, that black is awesome, but Jeff was talking about the black Fenici. Yeah, and even like I was really impressed. You know, you you dye something with it, you let it dry, and you really don't need to put a finish on it. It becomes color fast once it dries. Now you can obviously apply finish, um, but it. It was beautiful. Yes, you're so good, Andrew. One burnished belt. One burnished belt. Okay, so we're going this way. Um, let's see here. We got. What about that last question? Sorry, I cut you off. No. Uh, pattern for the billets. Do we have a? We don't have a pattern. Uh, I think we have a die for. We have a die. We do. We sell. Like I said, we sell these. So if you type in billet, um on the website or if you look in the shape section in the catalog you'll see we sell just natural veg tan black and brown in each of these style billets um so we we do that and then there's a couple different widths this one is the three quarter and then i think there's a one inch, one inch yeah. um in the ranger style and then in this one i believe there's also a three quarter and a one inch and just your the other straight billet. Yeah, straight billet and if we if i wanted a different billet in a leather that we don't have listed on the website could i call in if you want one of these billets in a different leather than what we list, yes. If you want a different billet, that's a whole new cutting die, and you can pay for that, and then we'll cut them for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see here. So, we need, I just want to make sure I'm sewing this on the right. I'm going to sew this side down first, and then assemble all of the shen shenanigans. Does that sound? Uh, what yeah. would you do? Uh. God, I would do this in first. He would do this. And I, I've got to, I've got to tell you something. Me and my, my proper terms. Here. Yes. That end is called the buckle chape. The buckle chape. Yes, hmm. that's the okay. Chape. Not the turn this back end. Is, well, you can call it the turn back <laughs> end. You can call it that. The buckle ch chape. That, but that's the chape. And okay. This is the billet. Okay. Interesting. So what I was going to do, Denny, on the buckle chape side. On the chape. On the chape. On the chape. And the and the billet. The billet. The shape and the billet. Yeah. See, Denny's teaching us all these things that we didn't know. What I was gonna do is I was gonna go ahead and sew this down, and then I was gonna punch a hole through the back portion, put a Chicago screw through this one, because this is where I was gonna put yep. this keeper. That's the way to do it. Okay. So you got it right. Awesome. So we're just gonna make sure that we've got this lined up correctly with where we want it to go. This is that this is so easy, guys. This is really it's not it's yeah, most people think it's a real complicated process, but it's not. It's really just not. So we are that looks just about a quarter inch from the end there using my eye gauge. <laughs> it's a great gauge. And then um do you have a stylus? Do we have a pencil? Yeah, a pencil. Yeah. That'll be fine. So basically on this, I'm only going to be sewing where these little notches come out on either side of the chafe. 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 Guys. And then just <laughs> around this end and just to secure it. So are you tracing the chafe? Yes. That way I just keep That it. way when you put the chafe on it, when you're sewing, the chafe won't move. And you know where to put the chafe. I just like saying chafe. Exactly. <laughs> so at this point, I'm just going <laughs> to spread a little bit of Oh, okay. that's so bad. <laughs> right here. Lean up on aisle seven. Yeah, that's too much. 
Clean up on the chafe. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it's got burn shake wasps, but yeah, yeah. look at that look at that it's fine now i just gotta see Sh- more shawnee we need to get to like, like a case of paper towels and a large trash can back here for when we do this stuff because we're not perfect <laughs> yeah and she keeps wiping it on my shirt so. i pretended to wipe it on shirt. <laughs> okay now we just need a, one of those handy dandy glue erasers oh yeah those those things are great the leather erasers yeah I don't know if we got one back here or not. Might be one We do. That's not the same. This kind of leather eraser. There we go. Yeah. There it's go. a glue eraser, not a leather eraser. I don't know. If you rub really hard, <laughs> the leather will go away. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll That's the nice cool. part about this slick leather. Yeah, it just comes right off. Yeah. It's, it's not a big deal, guys. You can be messy with your glue as long as it's on a <laughs> slick surface. Yeah. Don't yeah. do it on purpose. No. Yeah. No. Do it but do it like she did it. <laughs> Get it all over your hands. <laughs> this, cool. this was I might as well just sew down both sides. Yeah. While I'm at it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off. Man, that glue is good. It's on there. I know, I love that. I am impressed. Great. It's what just, is that glue? It's just the Rinia. The um mm-hmm. Aquilum three fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, okay. Oh boy, that is on there. It's on there. there. Oh my goodness. It ain't going nowhere. You didn't even, you only put it on one side too. I did. Sheesh. I know. Okay. And then we've got the 40 here. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. You did great. This is going to be great. See, sometimes I know what I'm doing, guys. And then this is just an inch and a half strip is what I'm working with. If we put the aquilium on the back of that, then you don't have to worry about spillage. Good thinking. <laughs> Where were you when we needed? I I just I like making fun of people, so I wait for them to do it wrong and then tell them how to do it properly. Thanks. What are you trying to say was experience? Yes. <laughs> In the zero times that I've made this belt, my experience has been to put the. I'm sure you've there. made blue methods elsewhere. I have. Yeah. Okay. In my coffee. Okay. Oh, not a good spot. <laughs> So it's just... Yeah, that Renia, Renia is great stuff. And even for edges, it holds really well when you're using the rubber cement to get right up to the edges for burnishing. Ends up turning out really well. Oh. Okay. Now we're going to sew. Thanks. What are you doing with that? I'm going to mark my stitch line. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's hard to use an edge guide. Yeah, this, this, is not, this is not too edge guide friendly. Yeah. That one's a little huh. different. We got the overhead camera, Tony? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just going to be my head. Kevin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Her big head was in the way. All righty. But you're just stitching out basically to those two points. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Over to the sewing machine we go. Got a couple <laughs> questions on there. You have a belt ninja finding the center for ranger belts. I see, yeah, you probably yeah, could use the regular use belt. Use the ninja. regular yeah. ninja, yeah. Yeah, because I think it it's a one inch, inch and a quarter, mm-hmm. and an inch and a half. But then you, I mean... Oh, it's yeah, that's a three-quarter. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't have a belt ninja for a three-quarter inch. Belt. No. We could probably make one, and then we would have a template. I was going to say, we could yeah. turn these these leather pieces into acrylic templates probably pretty easily. Just what we need yeah. more things to cut with the laser. Right. <laughs> Thanks for the great We'll get a guys. kit for billets and shapes. Okay. The neck down below there, it says, if we're going to line this belt, question mark. What's the question? Oh. Hey guys, don't, don't interrupt me while I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to back stitch on this one? Yes, yeah, okay. I just made sure. Did I already mess it up? I don't know. Hold tight. Holding. It, say if we put a liner on the back of that slick buffalo, mm-hmm. would you line it first? Ideally. Yes. 
Ideally, you would stitch your shape and your billet on, oh. and then line under that. That way, your your stitch line wouldn't show on oh, yeah. on the shape and the billet. A lot of times, your machine, you know, depends on the foot on your machine and how wide a belt you're actually doing. Hmm. Sometimes that's not possible to stitch past the that shape and that. And that's billet. just kind of yeah. to hide the stitch line, and, right? Yeah, make it look cleaner, right? Are you back stitching um, by hand instead of with the pedal? Yeah, just because it's at a weird angle. Not for Pete's sake. Any thoughts on making a money belt? Are you talking about ones with like the zipper on the back that you can stuff a few bills in? Is that what you're talking about, Nick? Yeah, I don't know what a money belt is. Oh. Um, I've seen I've seen them where they actually look like cartridge belts, you know, like oh German cartridge yeah, belts, yeah. you okay. know, with with <laughs> the actual pouches all around them, you know, to yeah. carry. Yeah. Carry gold. But I never had that much money myself, <laughs> right? <laughs> pouches I'll, full of money. I'll hold you on belt. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then I think most people would would say just the lining on the back of the belt it, it it's not glued to the belt, hmm. but there's a zipper down the center. You know, it you just fits on each edge. In. Okay. Yeah, and you can really yeah. fold up some bills. You know. Yeah. You I wouldn't want to put. You wouldn't want to put fifty ones in there. No, probably not. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> really hard to get at too. Like, <laughs> going to a vending machine. Did they put fifty one? I don't know. Well, it'd be hard to get to them if they were in that belt anyway. <laughs> so, hang on a minute, girl. <laughs> Oh, we gotta get God. my belt off here. <laughs> Is it time yet? <laughs> that stitching that looks machine. really good for Walking there. around on that, that's so nice. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty... I would much rather be hand sewing this right now. Well, get yeah. to touch it, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that it wouldn't be a big job to, to hand no. sew that no. at all. Hands on the whole belt, though. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah, but that's that's a long time, though. <laughs> but still, most people say, "Oh, I hate hand sewing," but most of the time they haven't done very much hand yeah. sewing. Yeah. If you do enough of it, it starts to become second nature, and it's it's pretty sure. good therapy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it takes me about thirty minutes to stitch a wallet, so it'd probably take a few hours to stitch a whole belt. But it takes me a few hours big... to sew up a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watch a movie while you do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was talking when I don't forget what uh, video we were doing, but we were talking about hand stitching, mm -hmm. and uh, the guy I used to work for had been to England to uh, where they made some English saddles. Oh. And uh, all all of these saddles that he was that they were making in that uh, plant were hand stitched. Oh my goodness. And they had women there that that could hand stitch like nine stitches per inch. And they could hand stitch about three inches in in about five minutes. He said, "That's that's wild. Wow. Yeah, that takes some serious practice. <laughs> that's a new KPI. Yeah, wow, <laughs> that's really. But cool. that's what they did all day, every day. Sure, is hand yeah. stitch. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I guess men could do it too, but but women are more articulate when you come right down to it. I mean, they, with the hand stitch. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have their their. Features are finer and yeah, my meaty have, hands get in the way. Better of it next, that's <laughs> next yeah. yeah, yeah, Jeremy says he's hand stitching a ranger right now. Hopefully, a belt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not the actual ranger that might get you in trouble. <laughs> he's putting up a great fight, <laughs> but I got his badge. <laughs> Look at the edges on that. Those edges are just gorgeous. They're yeah. pretty good. Man. Yeah. What did you use on that, Andrew? I used Toco Pro. Yeah. I don't do we have Tokenol in stock right now? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah we just got a whole bunch of it. Yeah. Okay. Just got a whole bunch of tokenol. Yeah. Probably the best price you can find on Tokenol if you even do some searching. It is the best price, yes. And if anybody has it cheaper, well you should probably get it there because it's cheaper. And it's the same stuff. <laughs> but I doubt you'll find it cheaper. But I doubt you'll find it cheaper, yeah. I think yeah, we're several like, dollars under what... Uh, I think a two, or, two or three. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
something to to consider too about the way she's stitching that mm. uh, if you'll notice she didn't stitch straight across that strap and you never want to stitch straight across the strap uh are you talking the end like the yeah. pointed end well those, yeah. what those any points? end right, yeah. oh oh okay why is that you've made a dotted line just like mm. tear on the dotted line. You know like how oh. paper towels are, Andrew? Sure, yeah. You don't want your butt like that. Yeah, yeah that's that's true. Yeah. But that's a rule of thumb for all strap work. You okay, I'm, I'm following now. So you're just creating a weak point even with the stitching that yes. your belt could break yeah. on. Huh. Yeah. A lot of times I've seen people they would they would kind of stitch back down towards towards the, the point end of that to billet to you know in kind of an arrowhead pattern sure but yep. not straight across you know okay but there's there's no need to stitch back on 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 this ranger belt like she it, it looks kind of kind of cool too yeah. without the line coming across yeah. you could use a contrasting thread on this too like a, a white thread or I'm a firm believer in white thread. <laughs> yeah, I like it I too. don't know yeah. why. I, yeah. I just thought, you know, that's a traditional yeah. leather stitching color is white. Yeah, I, that's I risk high That's all you ever used to be able to buy. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Okay, guys, I think we've got a ranger belt. We just gotta attach some hardware. All right, that looks great. Cool. It's got, maybe we'll just, and get rid of some of these. Something to consider too, like on the on the back of these when you finish the stitching, I always like to pull that last stitch through so it's clean on top and I'm not melting the top stitch on it. Yeah. Not a true. not a huge deal, just something that you can do. So you, sometimes you can get a hold of it. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's harder to get a hold of. So sometimes we're down to the end you started on you can't get pulled through. Yeah. Right. But if you backstitch, you can just clip it off flush for the most part, and you won't be. Yeah, that's true. Hurting anything. Oh, look what I did, guys! I brought my snips over here, so now the next time I'm at my machine, I'm not going to have any snips. What leather did you use for the belt part? That's a, a glazed buffalo. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's our vintage tan. Vintage tan yeah. buffalo. Probably one of our most popular leathers. Yeah, that's, yeah. it's it's nice. Nice. It's very comfortable leather to wear as a belt because it's uh, it's very pliable, and it's tough. It is super sturdy. Yeah, it's and it's water buffalo. Yeah, it's, it's not yep. it's not, not American, American bison. bison. No. Yep. Okay, so we just gotta put a buckle on this sucker. Oh, and then the tip. Um, so. And our turn back. And the turn. Tips. No, the turn, turn back is here. Tapes. I'm learn tape. learning all sorts tape. of new words. Tape. <laughs> okay, so sequence of events. We need to install keeper that goes. This way, yes. So the the keep the keeper instead of putting the the section where it came together on the back side, because um, that's actually kind of a finish side at this point. You're going to put that keeper where you kind of hide that section underneath your your belt mm, your shape. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> that's right. So yep. that will just get scooched down and housed, and it should leave just enough room. So this. So this keeper will keep that other end secured back here. And then you didn't even clip and burn the threads. What well, oh, kind of I an didn't. I'm sorry. My, my apologies, folks. I have so ruined the video. That buffalo, Start over. We, that buffalo we have, um, you can get it in strips already. Yeah. Yes, we sell it in. I took yep. this off of the wall that we that we have for the strips. <laughs> okay. okay. So this back down so that I'm going to scooch that as far down and then I still need to punch this hole. So I didn't do that beforehand because I wanted to make sure that I got everything where it needed to be. So this one. Which is important because you're creating space by putting that, uh, that keeper yeah. in there. Yeah. And if you punch your holes first, it's, it's not going to line up properly. You're going to end up stretching the, so stretching the belt. Like where my hole should be. Thank you, Denny. Once again, always have a granite slab under whatever, you know, your cutting board because otherwise it's really hard to use any punches, in punches, 
things in general. Like you yeah. need that really solid surface. Yeah. Especially large punches. Yeah. Something like, like this one. Oh, you'd be fighting it. Yeah. You'd be sending it back to us saying, Our, my punch is dull. <laughs> it won't cut through this leather. When it's really the surface. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Makes a makes a big difference. And, and usually granite or like a piece of steel works great. Mm -hmm. uh, tablet, iPad does not work well. Your really your wood table not going to cut it. <laughs> it would work. Yeah, yeah, it might work One. once. <laughs> That's a really expensive experiment. This is a really long screwdriver. Okay, that's close. Oh, I messed up, guys. Not bad. I missed a step. But that's why you use Chicago. <laughs> why we use Chicago <laughs> instead of rivets? Does anybody know what step we missed? Buckle. Why, yes, it's the buckle. And the keeper number two. So keeper number two goes here. Yeah, you can't look it. That's fine. It's yeah, actually, she was just seeing if that Chicago screw fit. Yeah, I was just making sure that it was going to be correct. Why can't I do this? There we go. Sometimes putting a buckle on is like a bit of a, a mind wreck. You're like, what's, what's, <laughs> where'd it go? Okay, so now, now we can install the Chicago screw. And we even have these cute little screws with the little flowers on them. Yeah, yeah. they're the only ones I could find. And we have ones that don't have flowers on them, so... <laughs> Um, you know what? I should probably put this one in first, huh? Look, I actually got some little tiny ones for this because the other ones are going to be too long. An interesting side note, we've been sourcing some new buckles like this specifically for uh, the Ranger that are these three-piece sets. Mm -hmm. We've got them coming in like matte black and some darker finishes um, rather than the, the silver, which I'm pretty excited about. A lot of our buckles, we've been having trouble getting during this COVID deal. Yeah, yeah there's yep. been a couple companies that we've been unable to order from here in the last year or so, which one of them was a lot of our three-piece buckle sets. Yeah. So hope, hopefully those will be here soon. Well, now my thingies don't match, but you won't ever see them, so it's fine. <laughs> and then... So you shouldn't have told them. So I shouldn't have told them that. <laughs> that's... Here. that's a pertinent rule of thumb is never tell anyone about what you did wrong. Never right? say more than you have to. <laughs> and that's all they'll notice. Right? <laughs> Be a horse trader. <laughs> they don't ask, don't tell. That's <laughs> Why does that horse have three legs? Oh, don't worry about it. They all come like that. Okay. Okay. So now we've got that. So, yeah, I've seen a couple. So... You know, if you kind of wanted to do this a custom way and, and you actually had the two different keepers, you would just want to have a longer shape, shape, so that you, this end, like you would have like another maybe kind of swoopy section or something in here. So it'd be a little fancy that you could put your other keeper on this side so that whenever you buckle it, because these billets are pretty long. So you buckle here. So sometimes it's nice to be able to have like another keeper on this side and then this one secures back here. That you is got, so cool. You got yourself a ranger belt. Nice. What job. about our tip? We've got a tip for that, don't we? We have a tip for that? For the end of this. Uh, the cutting end tip. Yeah, you should use the oh. No, 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 like the silver. Uh, we have a oh, silver yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know oh, where what it are you is. There we go. About? <laughs> so this is a three piece buckle set. Oh, we need to trim that trim now. It a little bit, but. I totally forgot about it. I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I even went and skied it down for you I so know. that we could put that on. Let's see. Do Didn't you want to do that? Small screwdriver? Mm, uh, I do in the sewing machine. I'll grab it. Let's see. How much do we need to take off here, Denny? Uh, let's see. Maybe Cutting. nothing. Maybe that old. Well, I wouldn't take off any. Oh, you just. Yeah. You just want it under nice and tight. Just like it is. And do you okay. glue those in, Denny, or do they. Uh, uh, they come they with a little screw. One little set. Oh, look at that. Probably. Okay, guys. So this is something for you people that buy buckle sets. There are two holes in the back of this tip. You will only receive one screw. That is because you're only meant to put it through like the very first hole in the tip hmm. and not this one. This one actually isn't even threaded. On a couple buckle sets, you might get one that's threaded, but typically that second hole is not threaded and you just need to secure it through this one. Is that just part of the mold process for making the belt that they put that in there? I've or? never understood. I mean, okay. We don't know, but we never get more than one screw. Now, so if they're if they're um, horizontally placed like this, that's almost always the situation is you will only get one screw. If they are placed vertically, 
like this, then you will have two screws. Yeah, a lot of the bigger inch and a half buckle uh, yeah. buckle and tip sets will have. We'll have two. Sets. So that's that's kind of the belt tip. Well, rule. that's really good to know when I'm sourcing yeah. these buckles to make sure that we have screws in the back of those. Well, that they come with the correct yeah, screws. That's a great idea. So I'll I'll worry about screwing that in later since we don't have a teeny tiny little yeah. set screw yeah. buckle. But anyway, so there you go. So that's that's that. So this secures down here. And this goes through here. That's and really sharp. Yeah. Turned out nice. Yeah. That's a nice but nice ranger belt. There we go. Oh my goodness. Boy, that is slick. I like that. So look at that. So oh. this tip, we kind of angled it that way. It just kind of slides through the keeper easier. I'd hate, I don't know. You, you can honestly do the side however you want. A lot of people will leave it straight. Um, you can do it rounded. You can do, I just thought that this would be nice and just kind of thread through a little mm. bit easier. So yep. there's that. I always feel like these are lopsided in in visual. Anybody? Oh, because they yeah, <laughs> kind of are. There's a lot going on on this side and not a ton going on on this side, but that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Anyway, yeah. so that is belt number cool. two. I like it. And it's, we have been going for a while here. Yeah. So let me, so lastly, I just kind of came up with this fun little, um, another little fashion belt using, um, some of these little parts that are just strap in parts. So this is another part that we sell just out of veg tan. Um, you can use it for, you know, strap ins, put a D ring here. I think we've got a couple different sizes so that this is either a three quarter or a one inch D ring is I'm pretty sure what the difference is because they're, they're the same up here, but then this was just a little bit wider. So, and you're talking for the side of a bag. like Exactly. Like this. So you can house this, this will go on the edge of your bag, you can sew that down, and then this will have a D-ring, and then your strap can come off the other side. Okay. So, yeah, just so- Just a decorative strap. Just a decorative right. little strap end. Um, and so what I did for these is I took a three-quarter, yep, three-quarter inch oblong punch, one of these little bag punches, and I have punched slots in the end of, of these after I folded them over. And I'm basically just making a chain. So, fold this over, well, you do this. Yes, you have to use a soft leather, huh? It works better with a soft leather. So I chose these. Um, I think one of these is regular stock. This black and gold floral is a print, okay, I believe, yeah. that, that yep. we sell. But then this other black one um, was just a fun little odd lot that, that uh, Dondi had in his scrap bin. And I just okay. grabbed a piece and I just cut out some of these parts. So, you know, like the... You can use the um, the printed bundles that we sell. Have a bunch ugly of kind bundles of the uh, ugly bundle yeah. probably has some fun stuff that you can yeah. kind of just cut up and and create a cool belt. And so, I guess maybe I won't go too far into this. These have kind of shown you you know what we're doing here. But basically, all we're gonna do on this one is I'm gonna take the billet. Now this was the billet that we had toe split for the first belt. Um, but this one I just did two different pieces. So I'm gonna glue this all together with the exception of the end. Um, that way I just have a finished front and back and we're going to house these ends here. Oh yeah. And then just sew it up. So I'll, got, I'll have a, a piece on either side and then on the other side I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take my buckle end um, and I cut two of those but then I just cut the, the second, the lining part down to where it's just um, where we're going to house the other side of this because then your buckle sides folds over and it's it it's completed. Wow. So that's what I'm gonna do there. So just kind of a quick little thing, and then I'm just gonna link up all these chains. Once I'm done, I'll I'll give it to the um, social people, and they can take some pictures so you guys can see the the finished belt. And on that honestly, one. what a cool idea but, for a bag strap too. Yeah, you yeah any sort of strap good that you want, you really? can, and, and can make bag it straps are the bane of everyone existence yeah. because you never end up with a piece long enough to sure. make a strap right? with. Right? That would so, make it real easy to fit. Everyone has a thousand little pieces yep. left. That's right. And <laughs> you can, true. you know, you could switch up, you could do, you have five different colors of leather on yeah. here, how many ever you want. And like somebody said for this one, like a guitar strap. Yeah. yeah. Any sort of strap product that you're trying to make, you can definitely do it as some sort of a chain. So that's a great idea. Anything that's symmetrical folds over and that you could punch an oblong punch through that will mm. secure itself. Good to go. I never thought of that. That's so, great. What a great idea. Anyway, so I'm going to finish that up because this is my black one that I need to wear with my black outfits. Because <laughs> I've got the brown one, but I don't have a black one. So I'm going to get this one done. We'll take some pictures of it. Um, and I think that's that. So... We got that done. Denny and I will be back with you on Friday, and we're going to be making some cuffs 
with yes. some stone inlays. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to do some cabochon inlays and some bracelets um, and have a good time with that. So. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Anything else we need to do, Tony? I think you're good. Oh, awesome. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you yeah, later. Yeah. Bye.